All right, today's notes are going to cover an angle side angle and angle angle side groups. So again, make sure you have that reference sheet. The reason triangles are congruent can be any of these big five. The reason sides are congruent can be three to choose from. Given definition of midpoint, say no more than midpoint, and the flexible property. And then for reasons angles are congruent, you have six more. Given vertical angles, which you can find in your picture. Definition of angle bisector, which means you sit in the word bisector. And then three angle pairs for parallel lines, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and corresponding. So if your proofs are using angle side angle, remember that that means that side has to be trapped between your two congruent angles, must be included in them. So again, how we kind of started out before, you're going to have all of your statements. We just have to come up with our reasons. Anything from that reference sheet is valid for you. Remember that your first statements are always what's given to you at the start of the proof. So we only have one given to us. So we're only going to be able to put given in our first box. But if you notice, you have a signal word in there. Your signal word is biceps. So you're looking at the section for angles, because that's where that signal word sits. So it is telling you that SQ, the segment, bisects two different angles. Let's start with RQT, the first one you'll see. So it's cutting in half that green angle, which means each side of that green angle is going to be congruent. If you look, they tell you angle R, Q, S is congruent to T, Q, S, which are the two sides of that angle. So the reason is that signal word bisects, which leads you to the definition of angle bisects. It bisects two angles, so we're probably going to use it twice. The other angle it bisects is angle R, S, T, which is this blue angle. That means each side of that angle is going to be congruent. These two are marked since you already used one. And if you trace out the angle that they give you, they give you angle RSQ and angle TSQ, which are each side of that other angle. So again, using your signal word, you're going to use the definition of angle bisect. The last thing they tell you is they tell you that QS is congruent to QS. Reason being that side is shared between both triangles. That means that you have a flexible property. And then finally, looking at um, the marks on my triangle, my proof is the last thing I'm doing. And I'm proving using angle side angle. I have two angles and the side trapped in between them. Okay. On this proof, we are given all of our reasons, and we have to personally come up with our statements. So again, remember, those first ones go in our first two boxes, and then two given statements, our reason being that they are given to us. What we're trying to prove goes at the very end. And then we just got to fill out the rest. So... I see a signal word. I see parallel symbols. I have a word, parallel symbol. That's a signal word. And if I look, my two lines that are parallel are lines J, L, and K, M. Your transversal must connect both lines and be in both triangles. So you have one valid transversal. The first angle pairs that they give you is they tell you that you have angle J, K, um, all right, guys, sorry. Um, I forgot that in this one, they put both given statements in one box because they just messed up and didn't give us enough credit for this here. So, I lied to you. Your given statements need to be in the first box to help get. So, go ahead and see on your proof, make it look like this. So, I have two sets of parallel lines, so I'm going to use those parallel lines twice, is what that's telling me. All right, but let's work with that first set that I already had it, JL and KM. So if I go to where parallel line meets transversal, parallel line meets transversal, those should be my congruent angles. To name them, trace them out. M, K, L, and J, L, K. So those should be my angles. 
M A L and J L A. Those angle pairs are alternate interior angles if we look at your picture. All right, let me clean up this picture so we can do our next set of parallel lines. Our next set of parallel lines are going to be J K parallel to L M. Again, your transversal must connect both and be in both triangles. So same transversal is what we're working with. Parallel lines to transversal is that angle relationship. Parallel lines to transversal is that angle relationship. So if I look, I am naming J, K, L, and M, L, K if I trace those out. So J, K, L, and M, L, K. That angle pair is your alternate interior angles. So again, our signal words were used to get those. Last thing I noticed, and if I put my marks back on here, encourage me. The last thing I noticed is that I am sharing psi. So that's going to be my reflective property. If psi KL is at congruent to psi KL. So then my marks are telling me my triangles are congruent by angle side angle. All right, we have less given to us on this one, so we need to fill out from scratch. So our given statement always starts off. We have two, so they are going to take up the first two boxes. Reason being that they are given to us. What we're trying to prove always goes in that last box. And now, just doing those simple steps, let's not be able to prove. So marking up my triangle, I am told that angle B, A, C, so my vertex is A, and angle D, E, C, so my vertex is E, are congruent, that's given to me. I'm told that C is the midpoint of A, E. That means it's cutting in half, so I can put tick marks on either side of that midpoint. So the two segments that are congruent are segment A, C, congruent to segment CE. And if you look at the reason that they use, they use the definition of midpoint, which goes with that signal word of midpoint. The final thing, I don't see any other reasons I can have marks except for these vertical angles they prove. Remember, two intersecting lines across from each other, those angles are going to be congruent. So if we trace them out, one of your angles should be B, C, A. Your other angle, D, C, E. The most important part is that that vertex is matching on both of those because that is what is giving you that vertical angle. The vertex is the same, that middle letter. And finally, if I'm looking at my marks, I have two angles, it's a side tracks and treatment, so I have angle, side, angle. All right, let's look at our next one. Angle, angle, side. So remember, that just means the side is tacked on to the end like a tail. So starting off again, where they give us all the statements, our first boxes are always full of our given statements. And the reason that we can say those is that they're given to us. Our final box is always what we're trying to prove. So that goes in. The end. And then we need to mark up our triangle. So I have YZ bisects, that's a signal word, WYZ. So YZ, this segment, is bisecting angle WYZ which means each side of that angle is going to be congruent. So this side and this side. So if I go down and look, I can find those angles right here in box three. Trace them out, W, Y, Z, and X, Y, Z. So those two are congruent because of my signal word, which was bisect. So that tells me I'm going to use the definition of angle bisect. They also tell me in my given statements that angle YWZ, so my vertex is W, and angle YXZ, so my vertex is X, are congruent. Last thing they tell me is YZ is congruent to ZY. Well, that's because those sides are touching, they're shared sides. They're the same in both triangles, so that's your reflexive property. And then looking at my marks, I see two angles with a side that's not tracked. 
that would be an angle, angle side. All right, on this one, they're giving us our reasons, and we have to come up with our statements. Again, our givens go at the very beginning. This time I'm given three separate statements. You can kind of see that too when I have the reasons given happening three times. So those are going to go in my first three boxes. What I'm trying to prove always goes at the very end of my proof. And then we can mark up our triangles and move on from there. So I am told that angle A, B, C is where it's at C, and angle C, E, G, where it's at C, are congruent. I'm told that A, B is parallel, that's the signal word, C, E. So if I jump on my transversal, it has to be in both triangles, so I have to pick that bottom line. If I go from parallel line to transversal, Parallel line to transversal, I have two angles that are congruent. And they're congruent because if I shifted those blue lines down, they would sit in the same spot, so they are corresponding angles. Name them. Trace them out. C to A to C. And then E to C to D. So those trace both of those. And again, that was because of corresponding angles. So it needs to go in that box that says corresponding angles. Took care of our first signal word, which was parallel. Our other signal word is midpoint, which tells us we're going to use definition of midpoint. C is the midpoint of AB, which means on either side of C, I can put tick marks. Those segments are going to be congruent. So segment AC would be congruent to segment CD. So the definition of midpoint. And again, looking at my marks, I have two angles congruent and a side tag on the end, so I have angle, angle, side. All right, we have less stuff given to us this time. So we always start out with our givens in the first two boxes this time. Reason being that they are given to us. And then we always put what we are proving in the final box. And again, now look, our proof is not daunting. All right, now, let's mark up what they give us. They tell us angle PSR, so the vertex of S, P to S to R is congruent to P to Q to R, so the vertex of Q. They also tell me that PR bisects angle Q, R, S which means on either side of that yellow, we're going to have congruent angles. Bisects is my signal word. They use the definition of angle bisector. So I need to name those two angles. Take them out. S, R, P, and Q, R, P. So notice that that letter is the same. So S, R, P would be congruent to Q, R, P. The fact that that letter is duplicated in the middle is extremely important. Notice that it's the same letter from the beginning, the one that by Then if I look, I have no other signal words, but I do see in my picture that I have shared side. So I can add tick marks there. That's my reflexive property. So side PR is congruent to side PR. And then looking at my triangle, I have two angles congruent with the side tacked on the end, not trapped. So I have angle, angle, side. All right, last one. We start out with our given statements. First two boxes. Reason B, they are given to us. We put what we are trying to prove in that final box. All right. Um, as far as marks go, I don't have anything I can add directly right now, but I am told that LG is parallel to JM. You can pick either transversal this time because they're both going to be a part of the triangle. So let's jump on this one first. Go from parallel line to transversal. Parallel line to transversal. 
So those triangles are alternate interior, which we see happening in this box. Naming them, you can trace them out. L, it's our G, L, H, and J, M, H. So those triangles would be congruent. G, L, H, and J, M, H, because of alternate interior angles. We can also jump on the other transversal that we didn't use the first time. We're jumping on the pink one now. Traveling from parallel line to transversal. Parallel line to transversal. We have another set of alternate interior angles. And if we look at the ones they give us, that's what's named. L, G, H, and M, J, H. That's what's named to us. The reason being alternate interior angles. So we use that signal word twice. Our last signal word is definition of midpoint. H is the midpoint of LM, so right here on this segment, which means each side, LH and HM, are going to be congruent. The reason that we use that is our signal word of definition of midpoint. And finally, if I'm looking at my marks, I have two angles with a side tacked on to the end. So I have angle, angle, stop. All right, please bring any questions you have to class tomorrow.